payment is due after each trade performed. Massive, right? So you don't want to have a $5,000 check held up because you need to fix a flashing, okay? You can withhold $100, but you're not withholding $5,000 ransom because of a flashing, okay? Um, and then make sure that you're very clear on explaining your warranties. So a project checklist is a really important thing that you guys need to have. Um, I'm gonna help you guys build one. But this is making sure that along with the contract, it's like a frequently asked questions form and the means of, these are the things that you need to know moving with this project, okay? You wanna avoid misunderstandings and create proper expectations. There's gonna be some nails when the job is finished. The dumpster may not move for a few days, stuff like that, so that you don't get a phone call about them complaining, because that's really annoying. But it's at the end of the day, it's on you. If you don't explain it, and you don't have paperwork, and you run into that problem over and over again, and you haven't fixed it, then are you really being a salesperson? I mean, a salesperson is supposed to be solving problems and creating solutions, right? So be a, be a real salesperson. So talk about putting a sign in the yard, nails and clean up, and make sure you do a walk around and you take photos to CYA. Everybody know what that means? Okay. So make sure you move all the personal items out of the way too. Make them sign off saying that, oh, there was previous damage, you know, on the home. So here's the juicy part of what I'm here to present to you today. We're going to talk about upselling. So upselling felt. Now what you're always doing, and I'm going to give you guys a quick work workshop on this later, as you take the estimate and you flip it around and you circle where it says roofing felt 15 pound on the estimate. All right. And then you go to synthetic at 37 a square. You're not giving stuff away anymore. Okay. So then you show them a top of the line option, which is like deck armor and stuff like that. You guys know what that is for your equivalent. Okay, cool. So upselling ventilation, box vents are free. Ridge vents cost $17 a linear foot. And then you go to the top of the line ridge vent if you want. Then you got your ice guard. All right. $3.33 per square foot. Okay. Upsell that. Okay. Then after they have purchased felt, felt ventilation, ice guard, they now qualify to get an upgraded warranty and you lead them to that. Now, a lot of folks really, really love these warranties because of two reasons, transferability and warranty packets. They really like to have that packet that they can file away, that they can give to the next homeowner when they decide to sell the home, uh, sell the home regarding the roof. They love that. Cool. All right, so now we're gonna talk about closing and objection handling, all right? So understand that closing is 20% of your selling time, but it's 100% of your money. If you can't close, which I know everybody in the whole room could get a little bit better at, including myself, you're gonna miss out. You're gonna miss out for the client, for your company, and for yourself, okay? So a key thing that I found is don't stop for validation. So let's just say you're outside and you're talking to a homeowner and you can tell that they're already like pretty much down with what you're doing, but they're a little on the fence. If you stop and go, what do you think? Like you just put up a duck like this that they're gonna take a shotgun with and just blast out of the sky because they wanna feel powerful and right and say, well, I wanna think about it, okay? Don't do that. Make sure you say, um, I'm gonna assume the sale and I'll just say, uh, where can we sit down? What's the best table for us to sit down at? A or B, right? Once again, assuming the sale, you're in control, makes them feel like they're in control, but you're really, you're the one in control, okay? Does everybody know what I mean when I say assume the sale? Good. So as we do your roof, and this is before they've even signed paperwork, as we do your roof, not if you decide to work with us, like, come on. Like if you talk like that, you're giving them the paint, the paint in the picture that they don't have to work with you and that you're a weenie. You're a weenie. Like, why would I want to work with a weenie? Okay? They're buying you and not your product. So, the other thing is to preemptively burn objections become the, before they come real and valid. Can anybody give me an example of that? Yeah, exactly. So, you tell them that, like, oh, yeah, uh, many people have commented on that after a roof is done, it's, it's pretty messy. Well, we actually have a really impeccable cleanup guarantee that we give you. Okay? So that somebody else had a problem that this customer heard about that they should be asking about, but you're already addressing it before you even get to the close, all right? So 
Find a partner and practice your closes. I'm gonna give you guys a plethora of good closes afterwards. The more you guys practice these and work them, the better you're gonna close, I absolutely promise it. Your rates will go up 25, 30% within a month or two. No questions asked. Show that you've done the client, so that, you, so that you've done this to the client. Don't say that. Show that you've done this a thousand times, okay? 69% of the people need to be guided. Remember that statistic about personality profiles? Huge, right? So, understand that nothing of value has occurred for you or your client if you don't close. You have to create desire and urgency and value inside of that, okay? How do we do that? Well, if they have a leak, and that's pretty easy at that point. If there's not a leak, then there's other ways to do that. And you say, well, at the end of the day, the roofs are just gonna get more expensive. The longer you wait, the more it's gonna be. It's never going down in price. Uh, we just had the virus happen, so things are a little bit more expensive. Whatever, whatever works for you, but obviously be truthful and be genuine. So be proud to tell people that you're a commissioned salesperson. I do this all the time. Uh, I constantly tell them that, listen, if I don't take care of you, I don't eat. I don't, I don't have a salary, okay? I'm 100% commission, I'm 100% performance based. So if I don't take care of you, I don't eat. So just understand that the reason why there wasn't a close is because of you. Salespeople are notorious for blaming the company, the price, whatever, that they couldn't close the deal. It's on you and the faster that you take accountability to becoming a better salesperson and perfecting your attack or strategy, uh, the better that you're gonna be at uh, closing and you're going to make more money and your company's going to be happy and your family will be happier. Doesn't that sound great? So right there is the acronym no, that without knowledge and wisdom, the answer will always be no. Close or lose. Without the C standing for commitment and consistency, you will lose. All right. Cheesy stuff, but whatever, whatever you guys, whatever you or you or you can take away a couple things from this presentation, it'll make you a better salesperson. Are you guys digging what I'm giving you so far? Good, awesome. Proud to hear it. So these are my top seven reasons why people fail at closing, okay? You didn't firmly ask. A lot of salespeople are like, well, I don't wanna pressure them. Um, you're helping them get out of their own way, and if you don't see it that way, you might not want to be sitting in this room as a salesperson. Uh, there's an incorrect estimation of required effort. Sometimes salespeople can be lazy, and they think, oh, I only need to do this, that, or the other, and I'll just, I'll just be good, because I'm slick. Uh, no, absolutely not. Uh, four, salesperson's goals aren't important enough to them. I see this many times, like, the people that I always saw that put the most time and energy into what they wanted and what they believed that they deserved, always got it more than the other person that didn't. Always person that's just like, I wanna make $100,000 this year. <clears throat> cool, who cares, why? And if they had a reason for like, oh, I wanna give $50,000 to my niece so she can go to college, that person had a very specific reason for it. Already tracking makes sense? All right, cool, moving on. So <clears throat> uh, people will, seals people will treat complaints as objections. Don't make mountains out of molehills. Okay, like I said, I've had people complain many times about the price and and all that stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, it's expensive, but moving on. You just just don't 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 treat it as a big deal. It's not a big deal. Okay. So number six, lack of closing material and strategy. I'm giving you all this here. Now your portion is to practice this and have discipline and work at it. That's how you get good at it and using this weaponry that I'm giving you. I can give you the best weaponry in the world. If you don't know how to sight it up and fire, it doesn't matter, right? So Believing that the customer is the problem, another notorious salesperson, no, no. So these are my top 10 rules of closing. Have a proposal in writing and make sure it's clear. Uh, what do you guys do as far as your proposals to be out there in the field and be able to close with? Good, yeah, use a program use, and have a printer on you, psh, fire, really, really good, okay? It really shows your professionalism. Number two is maintain eye contact as you're talking with that person. This is something that has to be practiced and something that you have to get good at is making sure that you're on that play, that level field with that client, okay? Um, when you look away, you're, you're saying a lot of bad things about yourself and your uh, abilities in your company. Number three is always have your closing tools prepared, like have your pen, your paperwork, and your demos um, all set to go. I have samples of ridge vents on me all the time when I'm doing this. Uh, my bag is ready to go. I can show you it anytime. It's my closing bag, and it has all my stuff in it. So, now, 
Always isolate the objection and close on it. Like I said before, there was a client where they just weren't telling me that it was um, uh, it was a certain product that they wanted for the roof. And it's just like, I, I can't sit here and go, why didn't you tell me that? I didn't ask and I didn't isolate. So after I isolated that that was the actual problem by saying, I don't feel you're being transparent with me. I've done everything you've asked me to do and we're still not at a deal. Then by isolating it, you close on that objection. Do I need to do an example or are you guys like good with that? Okay, great. So use humor in stories. Um, this is really powerful, but just make sure that it's you know tasteful and make sure it's in the right place. Like don't force humor into a conversation. Um, it just looks really silly. Okay, tell a story of a similar prospect in a similar situation. I've done this many times. I had someone that felt just the way you did, but what we found was that uh, it actually wasn't a big deal. Okay, so always ask one more time we're at resistance using persistence. Some people just want to subconsciously test you and they don't even know they're really doing it. But a lot of the old school folks, they never, ever, ever say no, no matter how good the deal is the first time. Just doesn't, doesn't happen. All right. Always look for a solution and have a can do attitude. Oh, don't we love hearing the good old can do attitude? Um, remain positive and remain relentless. No matter what goes on. Um, I've seen some crazy stuff happen, some situations. Um, you know, I've seen I've seen people um, you know lose uh, lose have great losses that have occurred in the middle of the deal. I've seen people die. Um, you just have to remain positive and control how you respond. So the next is always smile and always acknowledge. When someone says something crazy, um, you have to acknowledge it. Okay, you can't just ignore it because then they're not going to feel validated, and that's intermediate stuff. But does everybody understand that? Like. Most people just want to be heard. I've literally seen where somebody just wanted me to be there as a salesperson because I listened and they liked that I listened and they wrote me great reviews just because I listened and I used my senses appropriately. All right. Treat. This is the number one thing I can teach you guys or tell you guys is treat everyone like a millionaire and they'll buy like one. I had so many scenarios with salespeople that I would take in the field and I would take them to an appointment and they bring me along and. They're like, well, these people are broke, this, that, and the other, blah, 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 blah. And I would say nothing to that salesperson. I would just lo lo take that little bit of information and say, oh, all right, let me show you what I can do with this. So I'd go into this scenario and I'd be uh, just myself um, and I'd just ask the certain questions and get down to the bottom of things with the client. And then I would go to upselling and this client that my salesperson said was broke would purchase everything. They'd purchase everything I had. We'd walk out of there and the salesperson would be like, holy shit, how did you do that? And I said, dude, I do the same thing. I treat every client the same, whether they are a millionaire or they're not. Like, you treat everyone the same. Treat them like a millionaire and they will purchase like one. It's one of the best things that I ever heard, okay? These are some of my favorite closes. Now, I'm not gonna read all these to you because there's so many, but I'll just highlight a few of my favorites, okay? Uh, the first one, when would you like to have this done in June or July? So when it seems like the client is sitting there and they're stuck on like money or something like that, I'll kind of throw my own little smoke screen and be like, oh, well, anyways, when were you looking to have this done? And it just kind of gets them off of the of the, the no train and gets them on more of a yes train of, oh, I, I'd like to do this. Oh, I like the, and the next one's talking about uh, colors, like roofing samples. Is it called the ownership clothes? Oh, well, I have some samples here. Like, let's look at some colors. And then at the end of it, kind of pull it away from them and be like, well, you know, we, uh, we gotta get you, uh, we gotta get you paid first. You know, let's, let's figure that out first. And they're like, okay, let's do that. It just, it's whatever, however it sounds to you guys that don't get it, uh, it, it works. And, uh, it's worked really well for me. So anyways, um, let's see here. Whose name will this be in? I use that one a lot. Um, now, if you're at the point where you're with a homeowner and they need their spouse, um, there's all kinds of different clothes out there to get around it. I haven't seen any of them work personally, but my thing is just being like, all right, when's that person going to be home? Or can we hop on the phone call with them right now while they're driving or whatever? Um, set a future appointment and close it that way. I, I personally, as a, a salesperson, do not like being forceful. Um, because I think it can create problems later when they feel the client feels like they subconsciously were uh, coerced into doing something, and I don't like to do that. So, oh, this is one of my favorites right here. Is I know you've been thinking about it for a while, but let's stop thinking about it and just get it done. 
or let's just get this done so you don't have to think about it anymore. Let's lift that weight off of your shoulders and your head. And they're like, oh, okay, all right. So that one works really good for me. Um, right here, everybody that's purchased a roof before said the same thing about these upgrades, that they're a little costly. Um, but anyways, let's just get it done. It's crazy as it sounds, you're validating what they're saying. I said, everybody said that, but let's just get it done. And they're just like, wow, take, take me by the hand, like lead me. Really, that's really what happens. And I've seen it, I've seen it a thousand times, but it is completely real, okay? Um, let's see, reducing to the ridiculous, that's where you take a thousand dollar payment and reduce it to how much it is per day. Uh, I've used that one before. That's very rarely I've used it, but um, yeah. So these are just some of my favorite closes and I'll give that to you guys. So. Right here is follow-up. So whether they purchase or not, um, do you guys use a CRM with follow-up? Like does it have automated emails and stuff? Cool, that's really good to have and you guys should be really glad that your management has it for you guys. So always use the same approach. Do a call and voicemail through the CRM so you have, you have a, you have a um, timestamp of that stuff. Uh, text, email, that's whenever I, I am trying to reach a client, I always text call voicemail and email them all at the same time just to show them that's how serious i am the other reason is because not every client uses texting all the time or calls all the time or email all the time i have some clients that will never answer the phone or text they just love email they just love sitting at their computer doing, hey that's cool now granted that's only like 10 percent of them but some people just are that way and i have to find that means by experimenting okay be professionally persistent okay now, when it comes to referral wrapping, I plant the seed at the beginning uh, as when I'm doing my first bit of paperwork with them. I say, hey, I work in a very referral-based industry and you gotta understand that as a salesperson, I'm gonna ask, but I really could use some referrals um, after this is done. And I just wanted to be sure that you'd be okay with something like that, so long as I do a good job. And they're like, yeah, absolutely. So I get referrals all the time just by planting the seed at the beginning. Any seeds you can plant here have a much greater chance of being grown and fruitious here. Does that make sense? Cool. So create your own referral program. Like don't depend on your management to create a referral program for you. Um, I always said like, listen, I'll give you 250 bucks off any upgrades that I, that I show you when it comes to felt and all that stuff, right? So whatever it takes. What did you like most about working with me? Um, I literally will sit at the customer's um, desktop computer and, and when I write a review, I'll get to that in a second, but I'll just type out whatever they feel like they really liked about working with me. So um, describe what the referral pro the profile looks like. Oh, um, I need somebody that's either living in this neighborhood that you know, or like a friend that's had their home uh, for about the same amount of time that you're fairly sure they have not gotten their roof done. So describe what that kind of profile is to them that'll help them guide. Oh, Mary, that Mary is the person that I think would be really good for you to work with. Um, yeah. So then this last part is reputation management is making sure that you are getting reviews about yourself and about your company and that you can build a nice catalog that you can present to future clients. It's really it's your book of business, right? So put your name on every single one and make sure you show people how many times people have chosen you and trusted you. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you. Here's my contact information. If you have any questions, email me or call me.